Okay, so in this sample problems video, we will kind of be doing the same things we did in the intro video with uh, a little more application, I suppose. Uh, you know, how do we find that inverse um, e matrix? That's the first question we're going to answer. We're going to find the inverse of this matrix. Um, all right. So, if you've read the book, you'll find that they tell you to find the inverse in this really cool way using this thing called the determinant and uh, Kramer's rule and all sorts of cool things. The only thing is there's no way you're going to understand why that works. I'm not even 100% clear. You know, I just haven't read through it and figured out exactly why uh, the determinant and Kramer's rule work. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, but if we're going to use, you know, a magic trick um, in all reality, I would rather just go ahead and use the calculator because it's a little more practical. So here we go. Here's a calculator. I'm going to turn it on. I um, actually have already made this video, but had the headphones plugged into the microphone jack. So that was my work that you just saw from the previous video. Anyway, here we go. We're going to find the inverse of this matrix uh, with a calculator. So first thing we need to do is go into the matrix menu. You didn't see what I did there. And press second and then go down to this x to the negative one. There's going to be matrix right there above it. There, you're, you're in the, the menu where you'll find everything you need to do matrix stuff. All right, so the thing that most people um, make the mistake of doing is they'll hit the matrix button, they'll go in here, and they'll just right away hit A, and this is what will happen. Now, that's if you want to use A, but if you, if you want to change A, make sure you go over to edit A. So edit the matrices. And you're going to edit A. A is going to be a 2 by 2, so we need to tell the calculator it's a 2 by 2. And then we enter all of our numbers. OK. Um, so now we'll quit. Now this that just works out for us. This is matrix A. We want to find the inverse of matrix A. Remember when I wrote um, down stuff about matrices and their inverses, I called the original matrix A and the next matrix I called A inverse. So that's exactly what we're going to tell the calculator. We want to find A inverse. Just press this x to the negative 1 here. So there we go. There is the inverse. OK, so um, invariably, each year we do matrices, I, I get someone saying, well, why don't you, can't you just take the 1 and the 4 and switch the positions and change the, uh, the, you know, the signs of them? And sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So the answer is don't do that. That does not necessarily give you the inverse. You'll find uh, it's just not always the case. Um, someday I'll, I'll take a look at what kind of matrices can, uh, their inverse can be found this way, but I, I don't know which ones can. So for now, just throw it in your calculator and find the inverse. And it would only work for 2 by 2s anyway. It doesn't work for any others. There's, there's not any pattern that I've seen that seems to work. Um, so let's move on to finding the uh, inverse of a different matrix. Um, the inverse of number 19. And there it is. Uh, we want to find the inverse, so we're going to follow the exact same steps here. We're going to go into the matrix menu. We're going to edit matrix A. It's going to be a 3x3 three three this time, not a 2x2. Two two. We have 1, 1, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 3, 3, 1, and 0. OK, just uh, double check that for me. Make sure I put it in right. Thank you. Gonna quit. So now we want to find the inverse of matrix A. And I just if you press second enter, it brings up the previous uh, command you gave the calculator. It'll actually cycle through if you keep hitting second enter over and over. It'll go up and up and up through all the things you've entered. Glad I shared that all with you. Um, finding the inverse, there we go. If we want to have them be fractions, which I prefer, math. And the first thing is fractions. Uh, there it is. OK, 
can't quite see. If you can't see it, you can move left and right with these left and right arrows. And so this is A. A inverse is what we just found. We're going to write it down. Negative 3 tenths, negative 1 fifth. Okay, there it is, A inverse. And you may be thinking, wow, this look at all those fractions. Could that possibly be right? Uh, and yeah, it is. Um, first of all, I just double check to make sure that all these entries are correct. And if you put them in the calculator correctly, it does find the correct inverse. Um, but if we wanted to verify it mathematically, here's what we need to do, and is actually what the, cal the, uh, the book is asking for. It's asking for us to I, to verify that these are inverses. So let's grab another color, uh, and that requires us to take a times a inverse and get the identity, um, or a inverse times a. Either either way we want to go. But we'll do a first. And in order to verify this really truly, we have to do both orders: a times a inverse and a inverse times a and get the identity matrix both times. Okay, so that's just, that has to happen. Um, okay, there we go. Magic again. Uh, now we're going to do the first row, first column entry. First row, first column. So we'll take the first row times the first column. So we turn the first row over like that and get to work. So 1 times negative 3 tenths is negative 3 tenths. 1 times 9 tenths is 9 tenths. And negative 2 times uh, 1 fifth. Um, at the same time, I'm going to, because I'm going to want to add these together later, I'm going to make sure they have common denominators, which is going to be tenths. Negative times negative is positive. OK, this would be 2 fifths, but we want a common denominator of 10, so that'll be 4 tenths. All right, and we move over to the second row, sec or first row, second column. First row times the second column. Negative one fifth, uh, positive three fifths, and negative two fifths. First row, third column. First row times the third column. Three tenths plus one tenth minus uh, four tenths. Right, this would be minus two fifths, but we want a common denominator of ten, so it'd be four tenths. All right, so we are done with the first row. It has done all of its work. It did a good job. It should be proud. Next, we're going to go into the second row. is going to get multiplied by the first, second, and third columns. So second row times the first column first. So negative two tenths times negative three, or negative two times negative three tenths. Um, we can, well, yeah, yeah, we'll just leave it that way. Positive 6 tenths. The point I was going to make is you could simplify this before you write down 6 tenths. You can write down 3 fifths instead, but we'll just leave it like that. It'll still work. Anyway, 0 times 9 tenths is 0. 3 times negative 1 fifth uh, will be negative. We had to do something tricky anyway. 6 tenths, negative 6 tenths. Uh, and there's just only two terms there because the 0 times 9 tenths was 0, so we don't really need to write that down. Okay, on to the second column. Negative 2 times negative 1 fifth is 2 fifths. Uh, that's 0 times 3 fifths is 0, so 3 times 1 fifth is 3 fifths. All right, uh, and the third column, negative 2 times 3 tenths, is, let's go ahead and do that simplification like we had talked about. Um, that's going to be negative 3 fifths because the Factor of 2 cancels with the factor of 10. Uh, we have negative 3 fifths now. Now 0 times 1 tenth is 0. 3 times 1 fifth is 3 fifths. Next, we move on to the third row. So we don't need the second row anymore. We'll move on to the third row. And we'll actually use a pen. 3, 1, and 0. <coughs> okay. So uh, third row times the first column, three tenths times or three times negative three tenths is negative nine tenths. One times nine tenths is nine tenths. Uh, and zero times negative one fifth is zero, so we don't need that. Three times negative one fifth is negative three fifths. 
and 1 times 3 fifths is positive 3 fifths, and 0 times 1 fifth is 0, so we don't need that. 3 times 3 tenths is 9 tenths, 1 times 1 tenth is 1 tenth, and 0 times 1 fifth is 0. So, what is the result? Won't take long. We know this, it took a long time to multiply those out, so let's remember that what we're trying to show is that this times this, the uh, matrix times its inverse, has got to be the identity. The th it's going to be the 3 by 3 identity. So let's make sure that happens. Negative 3 tenths plus 9 tenths is positive 6 tenths, plus 4 tenths is 10 tenths, or 1. Uh, negative 1 fifths plus 3 fifths, that's 2 fifths, minus 2 fifths is 0. 3 tenths plus 1 tenth is 4 tenths, minus 4 tenths is 0. 6 tenths minus 6 tenths is 0. 2 fifths plus 3 fifths is 5 fifths, or 1. Negative 3 fifths plus 3 fifths is 0. 9 tenths minus 9 tenths is 0. 3 fifths minus 3 fifths is 0. 9 tenths plus 1 tenth is 10 tenths, which is 1. So we verified. Well, what did we verify? We verified that A times A inverse is the identity matrix. The identity matrix. This is how we say the uh, 3 by 3 identity matrix, by the way. It's a side note. Um, here is uh, first some bad news. We did A times A inverse and we got the identity, but we then have to do A inverse times A. We have to flip the order and show that it is the identity to make sure that that's true. Here's the good news. Uh, let's just save ourselves a little time. I avoid this as long as possible because I don't want you guys uh, to necessarily become uh, calculator crazy and dependent, but eh, whatever. I can't stop you. I'm sure you'd figure it out. Uh, I don't condone its over usage, uh, the calculator's over usage, but uh, it's a cool tool. And if we're going to save ourselves a little bit of time without jumping over and skipping the understanding part of it, that's that's the thing that gets to me about calculators. If you don't understand it before you jump to the calculator, you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Um, but we'll go ahead and use it to save ourselves time because we've already done it by hand and we know how to multiply matrices. There's no question about that. Um, so... Let's see. If you'll remember, the last thing we did was to find the inverse of A, and A is still this matrix. So there is the inverse right there. So we'll take it, right? It's on the left. A inverse is here, and now we'll multiply by A. There's A. So A inverse times A should get the identity, and we do. There's the 3 by 3 identity, so we verified. Number 19 is confirmed uh, that this is the inverse of this. That was our charge, and that's what we did. Uh, next, we'll actually bring it together and actually solve a system. And we will first do number 25. And as you go through these problems and you, you work them, make sure to check and double check and triple check to make sure that you didn't actually look at you know, 20, you can look at 28 pretty easily as you're trying to write down 25. Uh, you may just for some reason write a positive instead of a negative. Just make sure you don't do that, okay? So this first part of what we're gonna do comes from the end of the intro video, and that is writing this as a matrix equation. So here we have our coefficient matrix. That's four, negative one, negative seven, negative two, Next is our matrix of variables, that's x and y. Whatever order they're in here, x, y, that's the order they'll be in here from top to bottom, x, y. Just a little note. That's going to be pretty much a given anyway. They're going to, they're always going to give it to you, x, y, z, you know, in order like that. Okay, um, so there's a matrix equation. Like I showed you in the, the intro video, if you were to multiply these two matrices together, you would get this and this and so on. So now what are we going to do? Uh, well first I'm going to slide this over. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Because what we're going to do, if, if we had um, if we could possibly get this matrix by itself and then on this side get another matrix that has like something here and something here, uh, preferably numbers, right? 
if we get the numbers 5 and 7, we would know that x would have to be 5 and y would have to be 7 because these two matrices are equal. That would be fantastic. What a dream. Um, but that would involve like getting rid of this. Let me give you like a, an analogy. It's kind of in our minds here. Say we had the equation 6x equals 12. If we could just get x by itself equal to some number, then we would know what x was supposed to be equal to. And we can. We can cancel out the 6 by dividing by 6. And x equals 2. How great. Um, or what we really did, the definition of division is multiplying by the multiplicative inverse of 6. So we multiplied by 1 sixth multiply by 1 sixth and so these cancel each other out and x is 2 again. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by the inverse of this matrix. That's going to produce the identity matrix. The identity matrix, this is the 2 by 2 identity matrix, times this matrix of variables will just give us the matrix of variables. Multiply anything by the inverse, uh, inverse or the identity matrix you just get the original matrix back. So on this side, in reality, what we should know is that you know, this, these two matrices multiplied together would make another matrix. So we're taking that matrix, this matrix you know, represented by these red parentheses, we're multiplying that matrix by the inverse uh, of, of this matrix on the left. So we're multiplying on the left. On this side of the equation, we're multiplying on the left. So on this side of the equation, we must do the same thing. We have to multiply on the left. Okay, um, <coughs> may seem strange, um, but if you think about it for a couple minutes, it'll totally make sense because you cannot multiply matrices in reverse order typically. Uh, there's some exceptions. There's some really weird, uh, oddball cases of of just seemingly random uh, matrices that that you can switch the order. Um, then there's the identity matrix, you can switch the order, and then there's a matrix and its inverse, and you can switch the order. Uh, but other than that, you just have to assume that switching the order is not going to be the same. That long-winded explanation to say, just remember, you're going to multiply on the left to cancel out this matrix, and so we're going to multiply on the left on the other side. So what we need to do is find the inverse of this matrix. That's the first thing we need to do. Okay, And we can just go ahead and erase this stuff. <coughs> All right, so we bring up our calculator again, we turn it on, on, and we go to the matrix window, we're going to go over to edit, let's make it a 2 by 2, it's going to be 4, negative 1, negative 7, and negative 2. We're going to quit. We're going to go back in there. We're going to grab matrix A. We're going to find its inverse. That's not the right thing. We're going to find its inverse. And there's the inverse. Um, hmm. Let's see, math. Um, hold on. Okay, just confirming that that is indeed the correct uh, inverse. And it is. I don't know. It would have been. I think easy for the guy who wrote this problem to find a better looking inverse than this. Uh, so I'm going to call him out on that. Kind of a jerky thing to do. Um, anyway, we'll use it. So we need to multiply on this side by the inverse. Right. It's really this part that's the beauty of the whole plan. Because when we multiply by the inverse of a matrix, and by the way, the existence of an inverse of a matrix is just a, a super super stupendous thing. It's amazing. Anyway, you multiply these together and you get the identity matrix, which then leaves xy by itself. Um, so on this side, we need to multiply by the inverse on the left as well. All right. Um, and so what we will get uh, is this, uh, let's see, it's going to be a 2 by 1. 
uh, yes, it's going to be a 2 by one matrix, so we need to fill in this guy here and this guy there. Um, and So first row, first column, we're going to take the first row times the first column, so 2 fifteenths times 10 and negative 1 fifteenth times 25. All right, we don't really need the calculator anymore, so I'll take that away. Um, so we're going to take 2 fifteenths times 10, which we could treat as 10 over 1, and we could cancel these out. This would be a 2, this would be a 3. <coughs> so 2 times 2 is 4 over 3, so that's 4 thirds. Uh, then we'll do negative 1 fifteenth times negative 25. Cancel out. That's a 5. That's a 3. Uh, negative times negative is positive. 5 over 3. And we're done with the first row. So we'll get rid of that. And in its place, we'll bring in second row times the first column. Second row. second row times the uh, first column. So, we have negative 7 fifteenths times 10. Cancel. This is 2. This is 3. Negative 14 over 3. And lastly, negative 4 fifteenths times negative 25. We are going to get a positive. Negative times negative is positive. Cancel these out. This is 5. This is 3. 4 times 5 is 20 over 3. So plus 20 thirds. Uh, 4 thirds plus 5 thirds is 9 thirds. Negative 4 thirds plus 20 thirds is positive 6 thirds. So you get 3 and 2. So x must be 3 and y must be 2, so our answer is an ordered pair 3, 2. All right, that's the answer right there. Lastly, we will do a three variable system. Negative 3x plus y Alright, so the first thing we do here is the same as the first thing uh, from the previous problem, from number 25 that we just got done with. Uh, we're going to write it in a matrix equation. Negative 3, 1, negative 8, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, negative 2, 5. Coefficient matrix there, matrix of variables to come next and our matrix of constants. All right, so we need to find this guy's inverse. So we will use the calculator for that. It's a 3 by 3 matrix we want to mess with. And now we enter everything in. Uh, let's double check. Yes, yes. Uh, good. All right. So that is the matrix we need. We need to find its inverse. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. And look at that. It is a fractiony mess. Uh, so let's see. We'll move this over just a bit. And we will put the inverse right here. Negative 8 fifths. Actually, let's not put it there. That's silly. Um, we know we're going to multiply this by this matrix here, by the inverse. What's going to happen there? It's going to create the identity matrix. The identity matrix times this matrix will just leave x, y, z. That's all that will be left. And what we really want to do is 
multiply this by the inverse of a, and that's going to look like this. Negative 8 fifths. And so you can see what we want to do is take this inverse matrix, multiply it by this guy here. We're just going to replace this a inverse with a inverse, what it actually is. Let's go ahead and use the calculator. Save us a little bit of time. We, we are not going to be lacking in understanding. If you feel like you don't know how to multiply matrices very well, you should multiply this by hand just for some more practice. If you know how to multiply them by hand, save yourself some time and use the calculator. Don't skip the understanding step. Uh, okay, so here is A inverse. What we could do is just going to multiply it by some other matrix, this guy right here. We could go into matrices and edit matrix A and put it in there, but uh, I, this is the inverse of A, and if, if I miss anything up, I don't. I want. I want to be able to go back and use matrix A again. So I'm going to edit matrix B. Totally different, uh, unrelated matrix. And like I said, I've done this video already, so I already have this in there for matrix B. 18, negative 11, negative 17. So now we're going to multiply by matrix B. And we get negative 2, 4, negative 1. The important thing about this, the conclusion, is that this matrix is ultimately equal to this one. So x must be equal to that, and y and z, uh, henceforth, or, or whatever and so on. x is negative 2, y must be 4, and z must be negative 1. That's the conclusion, that's our answer, um, and that is all. Uh, if you have any questions, leave comments, email me, stop me in the hallway, come to my classroom, whatever you like. Uh, I'll see you later.